my background <clears throat> what I said in my background. Smash, tell us of your visions. Whoa, Mr. Formal! I dressed of the orc that murdered my father. He was involved in a battle with a another orc tribe and lost the battle and was enslaved. But what was strange is it was in a distant land that I have never been to before but there was a large massive range of mountains and uh, the skyline of a large city also I <clears throat> I forgot to add in there that there was a uh, an erupting volcano as well so and his volcano was er I mean there was an <laughs> erupting volcano <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> one of those dreams. <laughs> okay, we're all It was so here. vivid I could actually hear it. <laughs> <laughs> it went. <laughs> the <goblins. laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. <clears throat> yes, my visions as well. Dennis, what's very, up, buddy? Uh, realistic. Um, it seemed as though the fire. Everybody's giddy tonight. That's so good. I'm happy about that. What the? This f weird. This seems to be like magic induced. I was erupting, Gim. <laughs> I was thinking about Kate was Beckinsale so that, that, uh, pre Joker face. Now uh, that she's had too much facial surgery, together, all of a sudden his skin falls from his body, and all his skeleton form. And that's when his he said, "Malik, I am not what you thought I was." After uh, and then purplish flames erupted from his eye sockets. It was disturbing. <clears throat> Such nightmares. I hope it is truly just a nightmare. Alright, so you guys are holding hands and singing kumbaya, kumbaya. around the, the campfire and uh, having some rations. <clears throat> Feeding the kids. <laughs> Melek, you actually hear some, off in the distance, you can actually hear some something moving through the through the forest. Also, Tominik. You can hear it as well. Sounds like there's just one person. You can only hear <laughs> one set of footsteps. Stand up and I'll point to my spear. <clears throat> Who goes there? Show yourself. Ah, oh, congratulations, Zervia. Nice. It is I, Lady Moonfire. Oh wow, that was creepy. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she comes out of the uh, the thick of the brush again, and does a you know a little elvish curtsy and uh, pulls her pulls her head down and, and says that she didn't expect to see you back so soon. She said that one of her scouts had informed her that you were back at the camp, so that's why she wanted to come out uh, with haste to see if everything was okay. I will stand up, go over to her, uh, put two hands on her shoulder, and steer her to the wagon. And just point her face at the children. She kind of her her eyes get really big as you do this, and you kind of for and she has really no other choice but to to do this. So you you lead her over to the cart, and she puts her mouth she puts her hands up to her mouth, and she's really excited about the children. And then she she turns and asks and says, "Is this it? Is this all the children?" Yes, this the, seems to be all the children that we have found. <clears throat> we know of over but, 30 children in the area that are missing. This is all we found so far. <laughs> we ate the rest on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Some died to cruel experimentation or something. <clears throat> Tamanook is picking his teeth with a leg. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> With the uh, with the oh, the arm of the ogre king. Oh, I meant with the leg of. Oh. 
I was hoping yeah, that you would actually party. be picking it with the, you know, the finger that's pointing out there, kind of <laughs> picking your teeth with that. That'd be pretty cool. And the party turns evil. <laughs> All right, let's get Alcine back in here. So I'm gonna give him a call. <laughs> All right, so uh, several minutes. She's she's talking to the children. She climbs up into the wagon, uh, wakes them up, and she reemerges from the wagon. And she says that you are able to come back into Loudwater. This will this will be. The nobles and her have discussed it, and you are now able to travel freely around Loudwater. You no longer are barred. But she also knows that you are not affiliated with Alcine anymore, and that was pretty much that was pretty much the main reason why. Uh, that you are able to come back into the town, especially seeing that you've already thwarted the Lady of Shadows, and now her, you know, protection service around town, I guess you could say, uh, is no longer. So the merchants are, you know, they're they're happy about that. I mean, you've you've done some pretty good things the last, you know, almost week of time. So you've you've been able to right the ship for now, and <clears throat> she has informed you that. You're able to come back into the town. All right, I kind of step forward and I say, uh, Lady Moonfire, we do have one other um, incident or troublesome news. Along the road, we ran into Zark, and he was the one that led us to this temple. And then he had shouted for the other bandits to ambush us. And... Um, I believe uh, Smash could answer the rest, if he would like. Absolutely. He will steal no more children, <clears throat> and I'm going to hand her a chest. Uh, it's pretty heavy for her. She has, to, she has to set it on the edge of the wagon. She pulls the tailgate down, you know, sets it up on the wagon, and she opens it up and shuts it immediately. And she says, no, you didn't. <clears throat> yes, this is much unfortunate. Um, he had called for the bandits to uh, ambush us. He had dismounted rather abruptly to try to get advantage upon us. <laughs> He's so uh, formal! He had fell off his horse, um, kind of crushing his face, as it were. <laughs> uh, immediately, smashed He slipped and, uh, and broke his face. Upon him to subdue him, I as well. I tied him up uh, against... Uh, our wagon. Um, we had, we was attacked by multiple bandits and a Naga mage. When he says Naga mage, I will unroll the big scale hide piece. I tore off a back. Hmm. So you're talking a serpent type of person, a serpent type of humanoid. <clears throat> Nagas have a large snake body and the appearance of a humanoid. Hmm. Most interesting. Kuruvar would love to hear about this. And you guys know of Kuruvar. He's the, the mage that actually had, had started all this crap in the first place. So you know, He's out adventuring, taking taking artifacts from, from dungeons that, that they aren't his. So... <laughs> <clears throat> But she tells you that Garwin is going to be upset that Zark is no <laughs> is no longer living. Uh, it, it appears that he was one of the main uh, leaders of this band. We are not quite for sure on this, but he was the one who uh, tried to get us in the ambush. <clears throat> well, you need to gather your things and come back into town. She goes, "There's there's much to discuss." And she pulls her head up and leads, <coughs> excuse me, leads the children off into the woods. Then you hear one of the children say, I promise I won't tell daddy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and Tom, and Tom wakes blinks. Creepy. <clears throat> <laughs> so you guys make your way back into the, the town as you're coming in the east gate. Uh, Merrick, Melek, sorry, Merrick. I'm 
thinking about my other game. Melek, you, you hit the gate as you're coming into the uh, town. And you, t- you hit the gate again, and it just destroys. I mean, god damn it, Melek. Are you ever going to drive this cart right <laughs> inside the... Uh, I'm going to have to start making you do some rolls or some maybe some athletic checks or something, but you just destroyed the guard's gate again. I mean... They get it open for you. They try to open it up extra wide. And you hear the one guy says, Oh, man, here comes this guy again. No! And then, bam! You, the cart just hits the gate again and <laughs> needs repairs. <clears throat> so you guys make it back. Uh, she tells you that she'll meet you at the Green Tankard Tavern. Uh, she's got a few things she's got to do. Uh, about an hour goes by. Uh, you guys are back at the Green Tankard. Right on. So how's it feel to be back in a town, guys, instead of in a in the back of a wagon that's breaking all the gates in town? <laughs> I order me some ale. Every time he comes in and leaves the town, I make him hit that gate every single time. What's on tap, barkeep? <clears throat> barkeep. As she does, she comes up to you, and it's actually early in the morning. She brings everyone breakfast, and she says, oh, I haven't seen you all in a long time. You hear a... Uh, I, I have a question before. Is there still a blood stain? No, there's before? not. <clears throat> no, it's been, it's been cleaned up. You also, there is a... In the corner, you hear some beautiful music being played as well, and a song being sung. And it is uh, being sung by somebody that you've never seen before. Come on, save it. <clears throat> Do I like this music? Okay. I actually have it written down, so I can Whoa. read it to you. Don't read it, sing it. Um, hmm. Give me a second. <laughs> Our bard's going to sing for us. Hmm? Hmm? The shining knight with armor white, the dragon born with axe alight, the shaman with his voice no more, the tiefling searching for long lost war, a more unlikely group you could not say. Yeah, I'm terrible. Um, to the town of Liquid Rage they came, a band of mystics, misfits to stake a claim, good of nature to help the land, but naively lent a helping hand to a jaundiced viper who brought them shame. Facing the same fate as their shady friend, the heroes were forced away from the bend of life's clear blue and roaring foam, but now the group is seeking a home after having noticed the serpent's trend. Can the sullied group salvage their name that it was tarnished by another's blame? Can they rise above their past hatred born to save the town as once forsworn to bring to justice the one untamed? Wow, I'm got a tear. That was nice. Man. Wow. <clears throat> Bravo. Golf Extra back. XPs. You know, you, you know, you're right on that. You're level seven now. Congratulations. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, all of you guys are in amazement that this this troubadour knows so much about, and it sounds like you that he's that he's singing and speaking about, and talking about you know how you've been misled and trying to get your. You guys are kind of looking at each other like. What in the hell is going on here? You, you don't know if this is a, some big grand entrance for you to come back into the town, although it is, you know, barely any, you know, barely any light up or anything. So it, it is morning time. I mean, they, they didn't roll the red carpet out for you, basically. But you're actually really surprised that this troubadour knows quite a bit about you. <clears throat> kind of smirk at you and I get up and walk over to you. Whoa! I bow, say, um, Wailian Songsteel at your service. Very nice song indeed. Very nice. So I take you guys are back from your little rendezvous with Zark. Psychic. You know of that? Of course. It's my job to know. <laughs> How do you know such things? Um, I kind of have the same profession as uh, 
your former companion, uh, his murder victim. I was friends with him, and honestly, I've been tracking to make sure that you guys weren't still affiliated with him. Now that I saw that you witnessed his supposed execution and weren't ones that helped him escape, and then still went above and beyond to help the town with the kidnapped children, I am a pretty good judge of character to determine that you're not with him anymore, so I decided to actually make myself known to you. News does travel fast in this town. <clears throat> so, what are your plans now? I kind of have an interest in those looking to help other people and try to provide whatever information and aid that I can. Was that do you up? have do you have any additional information on the other missing children? Children, not necessarily. I do know that um, somebody named Viper Grin is in the Serpent Hills um, looking for free labor, so to speak. <laughs> and did you guys happen to learn also that this town was attacked last night? It was attacked again. <clears throat> yeah, same way too. Broke down the southern wall with some little goblin shaman. He had a little band of ogres with him. Uh, one of them missing an arm. He had a flail in place. Was there ogre, a name of the ogre Sankasug. called him Sankasug? Yeah. Yes. This and the is ogre's very name was Lump. Bad news. The guards managed to drive him away, but they did manage to. Burn a tent, burn a uh, building, and make off with some loot. At, at, at this point, Tamanuk will bring out the arm and start to scratch his nose. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a nice you, back scratcher you have there. <clears throat> I think it was on his nose, not his back, so it'd be a nose picker. I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. He is kind of uncouth. <laughs> you notice that he pulled your old your old arm out there, Smash. Yep. That came from the uh, Ogre King's, or yeah, the Ogre King's cave. I was gonna say, Malik looks at arm like quizzically, like where did that come from? By the way that you speak, you do know this shaman. How do you know of him? We had our run-ins with him in our past. And the Ogre King? Would that happen to be this <coughs> undead ogre that was missing an arm? It seems that he might have proceeded with his ritual and been successful. Well, then they have to be stopped. Oh, is it those goblins attacked me and they said something about the, the Order King being resurrected. Or as I used to say, Orc. <laughs> right. <clears throat> well, for the uh, nominal fee of letting me tell your story, I can let you know where they went. <clears throat> I agree, Tom and Oak. We should uh, pay the fee. And let him tell our story. Excellent. After they were driven off, I followed them into the Southwood. Their camp isn't more than an hour uh, to the south on foot. Would this be the same place the cave was? I'll step in for a second on that. No, it is not. Okay. It's, uh, he d describes it, sorry, he, I've given him a bunch of notes, so he's, he's done a g great job getting everything in there, so, but, yes, the, basically the way that he describes it is, it's, it's an hour here, it's on the, uh, southeastern side of the forest, of Southwood, 
but it's not in the same location. <clears throat> okay, so it's not in the burrow. But it is it is funny how uh, there was no other goblins or or orcs. It was just the shaman and ogres. So uh, that that that's one interesting fact as well. Shamash is going to look at Batista and say, "Do you think we're ready to take him on again?" We definitely could use some assistance in our travels if he's willing to join us. Seems to be quite a good tracker, and that is very uh, great talent. Isn't this the same shaman that kicked you guys' butts last time? <laughs> uh, yeah. Shots fired! <laughs> wow. <laughs> but we have you now. We'll send you in first. <laughs> well, I am a mighty wit and sorcerer. What mage? <laughs> <clears throat> Although I did get knocked out last time. Not saying anything, really. Waylon, would you care to join us and maybe pick up some more tales of our adventures? Of course. Given that um, you guys really are distanced from Elsine, and I say that, and I, um, I kind of go from a jovial um, way of speaking to deadly serious when I bring him up. <coughs> mm. Tomanuk will give you an equally serious nod. Well, I myself only considered him a tag along uh, quite a bit, but uh, in time of need, he did come in quite handy. Other than that, um, he was very shady indeed. I do not know of this fellow, so I cannot say of any affiliation with him. Any aid coming from an evil means will always come, uh, always end up with evil uh, reactions. That is true. Okay, guys. Um, to Tomanook, um, Smash, and Mel, um, here, gentlemen, for your services, um, uh, I can give you each 50 gold. What? You can add 50 gold to your inventory. Well, what is this for, sir? Uh, for you, obviously, to pay for the gate. <laughs> nice. Wow. I guess I I was deserving of that one for the shaman kicking someone's butt. Yeah, you may want to buy us an extra uh, wagon wheel. <coughs> <laughs> nice. Alright. Alright, so is it an agreement that we would take on this new adventurer. What, uh, what is he capable of but seeing? Well, we have not spotted him in our travels, but yet he does tell us that he has tracked us, so skills as those being quite charming as well is another uh, high skill talent that could come into our advantage. I'm well trained in many different skills. Too many to describe exactly everything that I can do. But name something and I'll be able to tell you if I can do it or not. That's probably easier to say what I can't do than what I can do. How many languages do you speak, sir? <laughs> it's more about languages! Many. I'm only capable of speaking two, but I do know certain rituals that I can understand any of them. Ah, rituals. And do you have a ritual book, per se? <laughs> no self-respecting caster of rituals wouldn't have one. Oh my gosh. Heavy in his questions, I love it. <laughs> so our friend here, uh, Malik, he is quite interested in uh, rituals as well. 
might be a good thing for you to talk about. Stream wants to know if you can cook as good as you can sing. <laughs> I can convince someone that I can cook as well as I can sing. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost the same. It's just foreign food. It always tastes good, right? How good are you at drying some beef for a good old batika? Oh, sorry, <laughs> Smash. What? <laughs> good at drying beef? Of all that the... <laughs> I've hung much beef in my day! <laughs> Well, my character Batista has an addiction for uh, dried beef. <laughs> That's his preferred uh, trail food. I can also encourage you to greater feats than you'd otherwise be able to accomplish on your own. How are your I healing can... abilities? <laughs> healing abilities! I can easily bolster any minor wounds. Bolster you to keep on fighting. Or moving, as the case may be. He's a he's a bard, Gimlet. Pretty handy with a sword. Not too shabby with a bow. And I can sing for the life of me. <laughs> and I may be able to help you out of any other kind of social situations you may be running in in regards to... Um, getting kind of run-ins with the law so to speak. I kind of have a reputation for being a good guy. I did like a song. Maybe some entertainment by We Adventure would be nice. <laughs> They've actually had quite a few run-ins with the law as of late. <clears throat> well, not as in the last few sessions, but before that. Uh, every, it seems like every every session they had a run-in with somebody. <clears throat> and it is upon ingredients. Bark is <laughs> your best wine. All around. <laughs> That'll be 150 gold, sir. And she brings out a whole bottle of elvish wine. Finest on the house. I will put the, the coin I just got on the table. You say 150 gold? <laughs> you wanted the best elvish wine. <laughs> yes, you did. <sighs> Lady Moonfire will cover that. <clears throat> well, she, check. she will. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Give me a uh, let's have a uh, competition roll there. Is it a bluffer? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm so gonna do. Begins. I'm going to do insight, and I want you to do what is it? Street? W would it be streetwise, or would it be bluff? Yeah, I, I would think it would be bluff. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna roll. Okay. Can I um use a minor power, real quick? Sure. Okay, it is... Shit, what one is it? <laughs> it's something that gives me a... Um, basically gives me advantage with bluff checks, as an advantage like D&D &D Next, where I roll twice and take the highest. Oh, perfect. I like that. Sounds good. Alright. Yep. So go ahead and give me your two rolls. Guys, I rolled an eight. That is piss, for, piss poor. If he rolls twice and doesn't beat an eight, I'm just going to bring Tiamat out and kill him and get it over with. That's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second one. Yeah, uh, she goes, oh, oh, very good, Whalian. I'll, I'll let them know. I'll let her know. It's on, it's on the house. Whatever you need. Uh, yeah. Lady Moonfire will take care of it. <clears throat> Bring us some of your finest roast. <laughs> here, here he is. <laughs> It'll be just oh a God, few minutes. There goes our reputation. Again. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you were asking what I could do. Impressive. I'll go no. back to the bar. I'll follow her back. I was like, I was just kidding. Lady Moonfire doesn't know anything about this. <laughs> Well, you are in pretty close with Lady Moonfire, actually, because you've you've helped her on with information. So, I'd, yeah, you, you'll be all right. Go with okay. the flow. Go with the flow, Padawan. <clears throat> so, about five minutes go by. You guys are kind of just looking at each other, drooling, and 
Lady Moonfire comes up, and Brother Griffin and Harrowleaf is with her as well. And the captain welcomes you back into the town, and he 